Hi, I'm Professor Anderson, and I study stress, both extreme stress and how that impacts our health, but also um, chronic stress and the stress of university students and uh, individuals in the community. So some things that can happen or you can notice about your body um, or your kind of mental state when you feel stressed. Of course, when you like are going through a test or so forth, you can feel that, you know, you're heartbeat increasing, you're breathing more, you're feeling those um, butterflies in your stomach and so forth. Um, and if you're extremely stressed during exams, what can happen sometimes is that um, a stress chemical called cortisol can actually block um, declarative memory in your hippocampus, so you might find it harder to think or remember um, what you've studied so hard and, and to learn stress over the course of the semester can do things like suppress your immune system so you might notice that you have more cold or flus. Um, another thing that it can do is actually um, hurt. So when your immune system is activated uh, it can release something called cytokines which can actually result in your body aching and feel more like isolating and you feel kind of sick. So these are all you know reasons why you might feel under the weather uh, when you're stressed. So there's some important and exciting things that you can do in order to help um, kind of beat those, the, um, that stress. Um, one general thing that they found helpful is cognitive reappraisal. So when you start to feel acute stress during tests or just, you know, if you have to give a speech in class or so forth, is to to tell yourself and reappraise the situation as that's actually your body excreting those stress chemicals in order to prepare you to meet the challenge um, of what, what you need to do. So they found that in research studies, this cognitive reappraisal, um, telling yourself that it is actually your body's way of preparing yourself for that can help um, reduce those stress chemicals like cortisol. Some other things that you can do concrete things that you can do is definitely get outside. It's even more important in the winter because we need the sunlight because sunlight, lack of that can feel, you can feel depressed. Um, and of course exercise is a big one, but even um, just taking a walk outside, bundle up, go take a 10 minute walk between classes or with your friends if you're studying in the library. Social support is a huge stress relief. But um, not social media, it's actually face time with people in person, people that are supportive and positive, and you can support and encourage each other, and that can actually boost um, feel-good chemicals like dopamine and oxytocin and so forth that can help boost your immune system instead of suppress it. So take that 10-minute break, take a walk with a friend, that can be a big stress reliever as well. So, and it's also clearing your mind and, and giving you some exercise. Sleep is really, really important. Better to not sacrifice sleep instead of staying up all night um, because uh, cr uh, cramming for an exam because, again, that stress and cortisol could block um, how you do on the, on the exam the next day because, um, uh, because it's blocking your declarative memory. So. Um, another thing that people find helpful if you like animals, like dogs and so forth, the research shows that that can help reduce your blood pressure actually um, and uh, help you to release those kind of feel good chemicals as well. So if you have an animal, cat, dog, so forth, spending some extra time with that um, animal can actually benefit you. And there's programs on campus where before tests and exams they usually do have dogs come in and you can go and pet them even for 10 minutes. Um, eating healthy, so important, even if you can just substitute some meals like that you would usually eat at fast food for a good smoothie or a good salad. There are, are places on campus that you can get fast food that is healthier. That will help you um, study more clearly um, and, and uh, feel better and less likely to have your immune system suppressed. So there's also um, relaxation and breathing techniques that you can do. So there's meditation classes offered at school, but I'll tell you an easy thing that you can do anywhere. Um, what they have found is that if you do controlled breathing, so five 
um, five seconds in, five seconds out, you're actually controlling your stress response. And so that is helping you to um, not go into a panic attack. You're actually helping your body um, stay in a non-panic state. Uh, and if you take longer out breaths, you can actually start calming down your heart rate uh, and start um, uh, changing the chemicals, the stress chemicals in your body. So the next time you feel a stress attack coming on or just overly anxious, start doing the five breath, five seconds in, five seconds out, five seconds in, five seconds out. They've actually found that if you do that about 10 minutes a day to regulate your stress chemicals like cortisol. And actually, um, that protocol, so 15 minutes, three times a day, is actually prescribed by some physicians as a treatment for depression because it acts directly on the cortisol system. So that's a, a free, affordable way to control some of those stress chemicals. Um, and you can do it anywhere, and nobody has to know you're doing it. So five seconds in, five seconds out, 15 minutes a day. Practice it while you're driving or on your commute to school before you go to bed or when you get up in the morning and tie it to some event in your day and then it will become a regular practice. So those are some tips that you can do. You can also check in with the health center. They have a lot of resources and tips there as well.